Now you know, where, where are my young people? Oh, all right, all right, there we go. Throw your hand up if you're a young person. You should be proud to be a young person. All right, there we go. Some of you now. I see a couple people throw their hands up, and y'all are hitting 50 now. That's still young. But listen, we're going to have fun because we know that to learn, we have fun learning. Everybody all right with that? All right, so we're going to do a couple of instructive things. Uh, first, do y'all know my DJ? This is my man, the end doctor. This brother is a conscious DJ. Can you imagine that? Like conscious, as if he got a good mind going. He was over in Morris Brown with Musiki Scales. Y'all know my brother Musiki, one of our great, great musicians, but also a high scholar. And so the end doctor is coming with consciousness. I just couldn't have anybody rocking with me. It's like a drummer, right? And so a drummer, in Africa, you have to have a certain kind of drummer. If they got the wrong energy, you don't want the drummer with you. You can't dance to him, right, Brother Jamoke? Okay? That's right. All right, help me now. Y'all don't act like we knew. So, um, we gonna do something? This for the old school first. Y'all know this? Yeah. Y'all know this? The old, now, yeah. I'm coming back to the new school. Yeah. So the old school better to get with it real quick. Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Yes. Uh, y'all, we, y'all, we. Give it up with the new school. The old school. Being on some check. We got zero to 100. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a DJ. Give it up for the All right. That was great. Know yourself, know your worth. That's what we're dealing with tonight. Know yourself, know your worth, young people. Right? And so, everybody that's here, you know, when I go to church and I go into spaces, we come to think. Am I right? You want to come to think to get filled up with something so that when you go outside of these doors, you can deal. But you got to get it in you, inside of these doors, so you can go out there and go to war. To battle against all that's happening out in those streets, we got to get it right here. And that's what this is about. So we're going to start with my man, Pop. You trying to provoke anybody to do anything particular? You trying to provoke or trying to get people to do things? Yes. Tell us what. Hey. Use your head. Pac is in his deposition, and they're asking him about his music. And he, they ask him, "What are you trying to get him? To, what were you trying to get the young people to do?" And he's like, "Think, use your head." So that's what we're gonna do. Everybody good with thinking tonight? Oh, yeah. All right. You got a green card and a red card. I need you to put them in your hands because we're gonna ask you a lot of questions. And so this is interactive. This isn't just watch me talk. This is y'all got to respond. So put your green card and your red card in your hands. One in each hand, because we get ready to ask you a series of questions. And if you agree, you hold up green. If you disagree, you hold up red. You hold up red. Red. What's your name, brother? Derek Jackson. Let's give it up for Derek Jackson. Jackson over at Ivy Prep. Is that where you in school? Right on, brother. Be proud of your school, man. You know, I know um, my boy D. Rice is in here. He's proud of Whitney Young. Any other Whitney Young folk? Kenwood? Kenwood. All right, there we go. We got some Chicago people in the room. So, we're going to have some questions. If you agree, green card. If you disagree, red card. Everybody ready? Yes. Is everybody ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Does anyone believe that too many of our young people are involved in criminal activity? Yeah, man. There we go. Does anyone believe that during police encounters, black people are often treated more harshly than white people by police? Yeah! Woo! Okay, we got a couple of reds coming up. You just ain't live long enough, that's all. <laughs> just keep living. That's yeah. what they told us at the Naval Academy. There was a brother one time, and I'm not going to be long with all of my stories. We're at the Naval Academy, and the brother said, you know, I've 
never experienced um, racism here. And at the Naval Academy, you have to graduate in four years. It is very odd if they give you another half a semester or another year. Well, guess what? They gave that brother another year. And we kept saying it was a joke amongst the black midshipmen. They gave him the extra year so he could experience racism. <laughs> since he didn't get it in his first four, right? <laughs> Does anyone believe the criminal justice system treats black people worse than white people? <laughs> Woo! All right, we got one red up. I'm going to come here and ask y'all now. You're throwing these cards up. I'm going to put the mic in your face and say, explain your position. <laughs> You know, I'm going to get you like on one of those cross-examinations. Does anyone believe that there's too much violence in our community? <laughs> ah. Now I'm going to ask this, it's not on the screen. How many of y'all are working to do something about that? Everybody should put, that, put the cards up because y'all are here, right? <laughs> if you're here, you're working to do something about it. That's why we're here. We're here to address that. Okay? So what are the consequences of thug life? So let me, I'm going to start with a, a senior person. Give me one consequence of thug life. Let me see. Somebody want to speak? Yeah. Give me one consequence, sister. Jail. Jail. There's one. Uh, can I get another consequence from a young person? Hey, young brother. What's your name, man? What's your name? Jalen. Okay, give me a consequence of thug life. Jail. Yeah. All right. Give it up for Jalen. Consequences of thug life. Somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Slowly killing your brother. Yes. Wow. Y'all thought we was coming here to play. The sis just came with it. And they've come all the way from Tennessee. Jackson, Tennessee, right? Let's give it up. Anybody come further than Jackson, Tennessee? Alright, let's give it up for this couple coming all the way from Jackson, Tennessee. And we're going to get y'all some t-shirts, because Eldridge has some t-shirts in the back. We're going to get y'all some t-shirts from the um, when we went to Washington, D.C. with Brother Fred Parham laughing in the back. Any other consequences of thug life? Somebody else. Felony, no job. Felony, no job. Um, yes, sir. Shame. Somebody else. Probation. Probation. Slowly destroying your life. Slowly destroying your life. Gang bang. Gang bang. Yes, ma'am. Family's broken. Yes, sir. Criminal record that follows you the rest of your life. Criminal record that follows you the rest of your life. And this is one of our conscious brothers over in Fulton County. Every time I see him, he's giving a young brother a book. They locked up and he's giving me this. Right? Y'all realize that for a period of time, we would literally get our hands cut off because we wanted to read. And now we're having to force feed books into the hands of our children. But we got to keep forcing that because if you don't read, you can't read. Mm. Everybody good? Say it again. All right. So Tupac told me, he had this thing, and I want the young people, right, if you have your phone, I'm not tripping what you have in your phone if you use the notes section of your phone, right? So Tupac did this piece called the code of thug life. Y'all can look it up. That's every, everything I'm saying. You can just you can check it out. And in the code of thug life, and who really helped develop it was Matulu Shakur, one of our political prisoners. And in the code of thug life, he says you either have to go to jail or die. That's that that is. Y'all gotta hear this. That is a part of being a thug. Y'all understand? So it's like being a baseball player. You go up to bat, and if you're anybody other than the dude that was playing with the Mets, you're going to miss sometimes. <laughs> right? Now, I'm a, you know, I'm from Chicago, so that really broke my heart to see you. Where the New York is at? I know it's in New York. All right, sit down, little girl. Look at this. Y'all see how they do us? They, win, they finally win a few games and then they just rub it in on the brother. <laughs> but it's like baseball. 
In baseball, if you play, you're going to swing and you're going to miss. You're going to miss. That's a part of being a baseball player. In basketball, anybody love basketball? That's right. See, I don't see no New York hands up now. <laughs> Knicks are so bad. I don't even know if they still have a team. Right? But, and the Bulls are going to get them this year too again. In basketball, if you shoot, you ultimately, you miss. That's a part of the game. And so what Pac is saying is that you, if you're going to be a thug, a part of the game is to go to jail and get killed. That's a part of the game. You got to just say, I Right? You can't trip on that. And so it really bugs me out when I go into the jail and Brother Leopold, who did criminal defense down in Clayton County, when you go into the jail and you're sitting on the other side of that big plastic plexiglass in that booth and a kid you've been trying to reach, their mama been trying to talk to him been praying on them, coming in in the middle of the night. Some of y'all don't even know how you got gotten prayed on. You done had a mama come in on the middle of the night while you were sleeping, just praying all over you, touching you from head to toe, praying for your safety. You wouldn't even realize that. That's what's going on in our households. And that kid who done been prayed on and been talked to and, and they done got the deacons to come talk to him and now he locked up. You ready to listen? Don't be one of them kids, young people. Don't, don't leave this spot and have to have one of us talk to you through the plexiglass. Now is the time to get it. I just, just trust that. Because on the other side of that thing, it might be a murder you face it, it might be a burglary, it might be an armed robbery, but on the other side of that thing, it's real. How many, um, I see my judges in the house. Can my judges throw your hands up? Go ahead. Judge Brown, where's my other judge? judge? Judge Harris, Judge Bridges. These judges, do you know how? That's a hard job. Day in and day out to see your people being brought in front of you and you having to deal with that. Because for us, how many of y'all want somebody to even put a pistol in someone else's face to just be let out tomorrow? Well, I'm, you know, my, my son's got on ride. Right. I'm still looking for the dude. You feel me? So if y'all give me his name, let me know later on. You know, we, we still got some street justice. I'm just playing. <laughs> Everybody gets got. See, that's the piece that we have to get because what our young people think and what I even thought was that, man, you know, what he's talking about, he's really talking to that other guy. He's not talking to me because I'm, I'm too smart for the game. I'm the smartest hustler to ever hustle. I'm the smartest dude to ever hit a lick, to ever kick a door. I will never get got. I watch, I know when they're coming, I know when they're going, I know I can bust in on them and get this flat screen and get out, and I'm good. But Bubblegum, who, who, who Reverend D. Rice knows from 79th Street, told a young hustler one time. Yeah, some of y'all heard me tell this story. Young hustler named Rich Johnson. Rich was a great basketball player. I mean, like, the handles, right? To do all of that in and out. Just everything. <laughs> he was friends with Benji Wilson. If you all have seen the uh, HBO, the, the uh, ESPN 30 for 30 on Benji, he was friends with Benji. They were boys. And so Rich goes up to Howard. To who? Goes to Howard, he's hooping, but he fails out. But Rich is used to being the man. So when he fails out and has to come back to the south side of Chicago, how do you continue being the man when you can no longer hoop for your school? How you do it, bro? Get in the game. You get in the game. Oh, man, I'm used to everybody knowing my name. I'm used to wearing the fly kicks because the coaches was giving them to me. <clears throat> I got to hit the block. So this is when crack just getting going in Chicago. And so he goes, and he's at this barbershop, 
and Bubblegum is sitting there getting his hair cut. And Rich come busting in. Bubblegum, man, they got John. Who you think got John? Police. Of course, cuz that's how I go. And so Bubblegum is like, oh, okay. So he just keep talking, keep hollering at the other little, you know, they, we call them young wolves. They just, just, just there, ready, listening to the OG, just on this thing. And so he just keep talking to him. And so Rich is like stunned. Rich is like, wait a minute. This your boy, John, dog. John, your guy. Did y'all build the black together? The police got him. Did you hear me? And so Bubblegum is like, takes the smock off. He stands up, looks around at all the other little young G's. And he's like, yeah, I heard you. Everybody gets got. He couldn't trip on his best boy getting got because that's the game. It's like the ball player who misses the shot. If you in the game, you're going to get caught. So there's no avoiding it. Y'all hear me, young people? Y'all understand? Do we have, if, if you don't mind, if you have been incarcerated before and you don't mind putting your hand up and saying that you got got, put your hand up and say, I got got. How long they get you for, bro? Do you mind? 15 years. 15 years. He missed over a decade of, was it your 20s? 18 to 33. Man, this man came here, he sent me an email, sent me his biography. He's like, man, I do this. I'm going to jails and prisons trying to save our young people because I've already gave them 15. I can't give them no more. I don't want no more of our young people to give them not a day more, not an hour. Thank you, brother. Give it up for this brother. It's something about church. Church is a freeing space. It's a space we're supposed to be able to tell the truth. To be courageous in it, right? Oh, yeah. So this brother is courageous and shares, I was locked down for 15 years. And been working since he got out not to let another brother go that path. So it, it just got to resonate at some point. So what I'm clear about is there's somebody in here, a young person in here, who ain't going to hear from me. That's cool. Okay. I'm not tripping. This ain't no messianic kind of thing. But if you go holler at my brother here, or you go holler at Kene Walker, one of the greatest teachers to walk the planet Earth today, and they can get you, if you go talk to Marcus Coleman, and he can get you, all we care about is getting you, is saving you. Y'all understand? That's why we're here. Y'all got my law partner mad at me. I have practiced law in two days. <laughs> trying to get ready for y'all. <laughs> Who is that, uh, young people? Who's it? Where's Bobby at? Huh? Where's Bobby at, man? <laughs> Bobby locked up. I mean, that's a hot song, but Bobby is hot. He's sitting down, for real. And this young man, where as we're about to celebrate, um, and I always, you know, adopt a, um, a HBCU since I didn't go to one. So uh, Reverend Rice always allows me to adopt Morehouse during homecoming. So he's gonna take me to all the Morehouses. You know, very nice activity over the next three days. And this young brother was at Morehouse from a good family. Y'all see that <coughs> from a good family. And, and I'll tell you right now, I have represented in criminal cases people who consider themselves African spiritualists, they, they're children. People who consider themselves holy, holy Christians of the highest degree, people who consider themselves Muslims, Sunni nation, you name it, I've represented families from all those different religious expressions. It could touch home. Right? Y'all understand? And so, this brother came from a good family, so he gets... Real um, 
crazy. And says, while he's at Morehouse, him and three stacks. What's three stacks? Man, the older people here know that lingo too. Okay. All right. I was waiting for the new school movies. They're like, no, three stacks. Because I need that for the mortgage. Um, <laughs> You know, if your mortgage is three stacks, I'll have nothing alone. Um, so he thinks the young brother's getting three stacks. And so he says, man, him and some other cats said they're going to hit him up. So they just get, you know, how's it, folk, folk get medieval with him. Take the brother, beat him up, where's the money, where's the money? Some old gangster stuff. They're in college. Trying to be a gangster in college. Paying thirty thousand dollars a year trying to be a gangster. I mean, that's crazy. That's how off that behavior is. And so he goes, and they go. They take him. They beat him. They duct tape him. That's what I'm saying. This gangster mentality. Put him in the back of a truck. The brother suffocates and dies. He is now doing life. He took a young brother's life who was a Morehouse student, and now this Morehouse student is doing life. It's a wrap. For, now keep in mind, it's three of them. So the most they could have got was $1,000 each. And they didn't get it, they didn't even get that. The check hadn't come in yet. That's how ludicrous it is. Y'all understand? So, what we're saying to our young people, even when you graduate from high school, like, I mean, I didn't graduate. I'm a man now. Guard your consciousness. That's right. Surround yourself with people, with information that's going to keep feeding you the good stuff. Say that again. Y'all understand? Say that again, folks. Because y'all got to, you all got to know this. That just getting into college, it ain't the, I just seen a whole, we represent a, a lot of, you know, <laughs> these sneakers are paid for by some students over in Clark, Okay. Over at Morehouse, over at Spelman, that got over there and got brand new. You get over there and then you say, well, now it's time for me to be a gangster. You didn't do that back at the crib. I got up to Maryland and some of the guys that I knew from back in Chicago went up to Howard trying to sell dope. I was like, what y'all doing, man? You know that would not run in Chicago. You went straight to Jax. Them, but you know, I had to, I had to run it with them in Milwaukee because that was when that little kid died. You know what I mean? Yeah, I heard you said shout out to him. You know, I had to do the show that next day. What happened? They just killed that kid. Yeah. Cause you know what happened, right? Yeah, they executed him. Right, they executed him. Lost souls are always alone, and when the cold was, you don't get the cold. Y'all remember Yummy? Yeah. 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 So Yummy was um. From your neighborhood, wasn't he, Dean? Right around the corner. Right around the corner. In the south side of Chicago, 11 years old, does a drive-by, ends up killing a little girl. And so the heat was on so tough that they lured him into a, we call it a Vida. It's a little tunnel thing. I don't know if y'all, I ain't never seen a Vida in um, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Am I just using the, wrong, the word wrong? The Cab Avenue. The Cab Avenue, there's a Vida. I get the Cab Avenue, there it is. So they lured him. And then they shoot the little, little brother in the head. They execute him, 11 years old. And so it's on the cover of Time Magazine. And so Pac is giving a performance. And so the phone call that you're hearing is him talking to Monster Cody. So Monster Cody has a book called Monster. You should, you should get it. But Monster Cody is a big time, um, he was a big time crip in LA and changed his life around at least for a period of time. And so he and Pac are on the phone. And so that phone call is being recorded. And so Pac is talking about being in Milwaukee, talking and rapping and going off on the, on the guys, the gang that did this. And so Pac is like, man, this is, this is wrong. So he talks a little bit further. They killed this little kid. Oh. And they all screaming out, bad lies. And I, I felt bad. Like, when he just got it twisted. He's like, they all screaming out, thug life. So they're at his concert, screaming out, thug life. And he said, man, I felt bad. They got it twisted. So we got people that's saying they thugging, 
And they think that somehow they living up to something Pac set up. Because before Pac put the two words together, that wasn't a part of the vocabulary. Thug life is a Pac created understanding of whatever it is. And so he was like, they got it twisted, man. I'm not advocating nobody executing an 11 year old. I'm not with that. And so he goes on, and I had to cut it out faster because he, he did a little cussing, so I didn't. I, I, yes, sir. Right, that's right. We ain't gonna get too kidding. We're gonna play some music, but it's edited now. Um, but he goes off. He calls them cowards. Killing little kids, you're a coward. And so when we think about this idea of being a thug, we have to make it real human. What does that mean? Do you think it's okay to kill kids? Right? Because if you want that life, you gotta be sign. Are you signing up for that? Because you, you, you can't tiptoe. You can't be on, you know, one day you're on this side of the line, the other day you're on this side. You can't go back and forth. You gotta decide. I'm not on that. And if you're on it, you gotta be prepared to go all the way. And all the way means you may be like this young brother who has given up his entire life for the hope of getting $1,000 that he never got. That said, when I said I was living thug life, believe it was all real. Mm -hmm. You know, and as sure as thug life is tattooed across my stomach, it will always be a part of me. But thug life is like the 12th grade. Some people graduate from high school and don't seek to do anything else. Mm -hmm. So they continue to live the thug life. Mm -hmm. Some people want to go to college. Mm -hmm. And um, want to go, hold on, let me pick up the other some people go to college. Yeah, like high school is stuff. Like, you know, you graduate from high, from 12th grade, and you can live your whole life with a high school diploma, but you're always going to be missing something. That's what I felt like I was. Thug life is always going to be real to me, and it still is real to me, because as long as the things that, as long as the factors that make thug life are there, thug life will be there. But I also felt like I wanted to go to college. Not college in a school or university, but college in life. I wanted to move up. So I wanted to
Tony Hall. We have, as a community, and as a lot of parents, we have devalued education and learning, like long learning, and we are not holding our kids accountable. We're not loving them, we're not disciplining them, mm. we're not teaching them, and loving them some more. That's the problem. That's real. Drop the mic. That's it. Brother, I got I want to hear from his young brother too. You gonna speak? Okay. I think it's uh here. I think it's limited new mental exposure. I think our kids are not mentally exposing them themselves to other experiences. You know, they're limited, they're false to a circle. And that circle normally comes from a, a certain culture. So I think if they uh, expand that thinking, then they're going to get it. Let's pass the mic to make the brother get real quick. And we're going to keep moving. Everybody all right? See, cause it, it, because our answer is us. It's not, you know, I'm a lawyer, but I, I don't have all the answers. You know, like uh, in that Kanye with Sway. You don't have all the answers, Sway. Y'all got to catch up, man. Go ahead, brother. Well, growing up in this area, I realized that most most people my age, most young men my age, actually think the gang banging and, and, and living a thug life is an occupation of choice. You know what I mean? So they, that's what they really want to grow up and do. But they don't realize the consequences that actually come along with it. They're not ready to follow through. You, know? you said a, an occupation of choice. Y'all get that? Now, I'm going to use that going forward. What's your name? I'm going to give you credit the first time I use it, but after that, that's the mom you did. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're gonna we're gonna keep moving. Everybody, um, we're gonna talk about some of the other thoughts, right? Because because check, part of it is that you know we 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 end up this plan. Um, I just want to be successful, and I had those images up there, right? These images right here, and they play it again for a doc, just so they can. See, I caught him on guard. He's like, yeah, I'm going to the next slide. Yeah, you got to be on your. Money in the cars. It is, you know, it's edited, it's edited. I just want to be successful. Right? And so part of the part part of the thing is, is that what we've said to our young people, even through what we do, is that the only way to be successful is that you have to be just decked out. Right? You have to be getting paid. And I'm not going to bust nobody out, but there are people in here that make under $40,000 a year that are successful because they're serving our people. There's some people in here that don't get paid. Right? How many of you all in here work a job just to feed your family, but you got another passion to work with young people? Put your hand up. Put your hand up, people. So these folks, uh, doing a job, right, to keep a roof over their head, but what they really love to do is serve you, and they don't get paid for it, and they're being successful. We got to redefine what successful is, right. because as long as being successful is just being bling bling, our kids don't want that, but then if they can see you stand up and speak in the church. Or stand up and speak in the mosque. Or stand up and coach a, a little league football team like what Marcus does. That can get them. They can say, oh, that's what being a man and a woman is. It's not just what you ride in, what you wear. So we, that's on us though, y'all. Because we buy into that. You know, I know y'all y'all watched Empire last night. Go ahead, put your hand up. Put your green card up. All y'all put your green card up you watch Empire. Go ahead. You know, because I watched it too. I'm just going to, because I'm in church, I can't lie. But, you know, so all of that, man, we got to, we got to um, counterbalance it. We have to counterbalance it. That can't be it. If that's all we're feeding them about success, then that'll be it. So anybody here mind having your billboard up as you enter the city of Atlanta? Who would like that? Be honest. Like if you had, you know, go ahead, put your hand up. Oh 
Hey, sis, be real. You know, I got a billboard. I would love if my billboard was right there when you come into Atlanta, like that so so deaf one used to be. Yeah. Damn, you know about that. Damn, in the music industry, he knows, man. You come in as a so so deaf with the big afro. You didn't even, you weren't in Atlanta till you saw it. Right? Well, he had never had a billboard. As you enter Atlanta, they did have one. Anybody want a multi platinum recording artist to do a song about you? Be I go ahead. Thanks, man. You want to be there. All right, all right. You know, you don't want somebody rapping your name? I believe you. That, that might not work too well. <laughs> Judge Harris. Da, 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 da. You know? <laughs> right, she said somebody already made a rap about her. Okay. Anybody want to have $100 million tax free? Now everybody, put your green card up, don't fake, do not fake. That's why I see some of my prosecutor friends put their cards up, like, yeah, yeah, a hundred million please. Well, you're on the cover of the magazine, who is that he's talking to, who is this? Nelly, Nelly, I know, you know, you got nobody from St. Louis, repping the loop. You got Nelly, you got him on the cover. You got the ice, the ice sculpture. You got the Rolls Royce. You got the party. The party had um, uh, um, giraffe in it, right? The party had a giraffe. You go to the compound, you know, some of you all who are old enough to go and have been to the compound. Have you ever been there with a giraffe? Would that trip you out? Where did the giraffe come from? <laughs> Like, this wasn't bad. I was just drinking my um, water, Rev. How did the giraffe get in here? And the tiger? Wait, wait, who brought the tiger? Well, he had a party with, at the compound, with the giraffe and the tiger. I talked to um, one of BMS members today. And we talked about what that life was like. So, in all, by all accounts, if we were just to go by the song that Drake gave us, the money, the cars, the clothes, and you know, the young ladies, that was a part of the song. I'm not making that up. He was successful. <coughs> Dude, can we be honest about it? If, 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 if we just went by what Drake said in that song, Meech was successful. He was more than successful. Give him a song. I mean, he knows he's good. Look, see? How many y'all know this song? Guys, I don't want to sing it. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. Right? So check. So they got the song about A song from Rick Ross about does anybody want to be in prison in the federal penitentiary until 2031? Can you put up a red card, please, if that is, you know, you're like, nah, that ain't. No, go ahead. This is audience participation. Put the red card up. I don't want to go to federal prison until 2031. That ain't for me. Not only go to federal prison, you're going to go out to Supermax. Where they hold our political prisoners, you know, when you a real organizer, they'll put you somewhere where you can't organize nobody. Because as mad as you may want to be at Meech, the brother was a genius. For real. He was a bad dude. He just, you know, we all got superpowers. I got superpowers. I just try to use them in the right way. He was using the superpowers in the wrong way. He had all that charisma be able to pull men together from all these different cliques all over the country. Crips, Bloods, GDs, Stones, all over the country. He pulled them together and put them under one umbrella and say, death before dishonor. That's gangster. You kind of like that. But you got to do it for the right reasons. Right? So, it wasn't sustainable. Right? His, uh, said the occupational choice. His occupational choice wasn't sustainable. 
check. Let's 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 look how unsustainable it was. We're gonna read the letter. Some of y'all have seen the letter before. Help me read it. I am writing you this letter to ask you to please, 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 please consider giving me a fine on the GPS system. What's the red?
They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black. There's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure. High and I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out. Yes, I'm black. I'm proud of it. I'm black and beautiful. Y'all ain't seen that, Dr. King. Y'all, we miss him during the King celebration. They just will just give us, they're going to put the, um, they're going to put the I Have a Dream, they get ready to um, put a bell on top of Stone Mountain. Like that's going to equal the scales. Y'all don't get me fired up about that now. Like putting the bell on the mountain is going to equal the scales when you got a whole park dedicated and committed to thuggery. To white thuggery. That's what it was. Just taking people. Enslaving people. Raping people. Taking all of their life and their labor from them and you're going to put a bell at the top and that's going to equal the scales. Come on. We got to be honest, man. So, we're going to check our hustle. Anybody got a hustle? Put your hand up. Y'all better have a hustle. <laughs> when I say hustle, I don't mean like illegal. I mean everybody in here better have a hustle. And you better get at it every day. You get up, you're like, man, I'm hard, hard, hard. You better get up hustling real hard. Because if not, your mic's going to get cut off. They're going to come and get that Lexus. Like, I just missed one payment. You don't get to miss no payments from Lexus. Trust me. <laughs> Check them on top of the bowls. Make sure they put this. You know, put it on the bed. So look. So these are some hustles. Right? We got a plumber. My plumber kills me. I mean, he just, he owns me. I just, I'm on a payment plan with my plumber. For real. You got the IT move. You know, you got the sock entrepreneur. Y'all know this freaking sock man? Sock man. Man, look. You gotta holler at me. I will have some big two white socks that come out in my house shoes on me. <coughs> water entrepreneur. You gotta do the math on the water, right? How much can you get a 24 thing of water for now? At about five dollars. Right? You sell it, it's 24 of them. You sell a dollar a pop. You get them all sold on a hot summer day in one hour. So you made how much money? $19. Alright, some of y'all. We don't see y'all back to school. 20, 24, then you put the five and you bring the number over. $19. So you make it $19 an hour. I ain't mad at $19 an hour. You can just beat what they fighting for. They fight for 15 an hour, right? Nothing wrong with these hustles. You get to go home at night. Nobody's gonna duct tape you, put you in a trunk, you know, hold your kid for ransom. Like, you know, can you cut the dope? No, no, no. Just, I'm selling water, man. I'm good. You want water? Nobody's ever mad at the water, man. How could you be? Kicking the door. So here's another hustle. We're going to do the math on this hustle. Right? So the kick the door move. You come in, boom, you kick the door, you get a flat screen. That's all you get. And I'm not going to ask any of y'all the last time you bought a flat screen out of the barbershop. <laughs> I know some of you all have. And you buy that flat screen for about $100. Maybe 100 feet. But you could go to the to the Walmart and get it for what? 199. So look at the look at the numbers. Oh, that's good. You got some biggies. You trying to <laughs> see? 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 We got all West Coast. Um, so you got $172 because you got a probation fee. I think the probation fee has gone up though. Yeah. Probation fee is going up. I gotta update the slide. Don't want that against me. Alright? We're gonna do the numbers. 
Attorney Steve, when Chris Leopold was doing criminal defense law, he just got out the business. He made so much money, he said, man, I'm going to just tax it. I'm good. Right? But $4,000 is a modest fee. Right? They'll go, I don't want to bust y'all out, but y'all will go pay other folk to that. It's a fact. Y'all come to us talk about it. Can't you do it on the loan? Right. right. Uh, you better go downtown and ask him. Um, and then you got a one year minimum wage uh, of lost work. Where does that come from? That means you went to prison for a year because you kicked someone's door. So for that year that you could have made a minimum wage job, that's a wrap. Plus, you have to try to protect yourself from predators in the jail. Is it worth it? If you think it's worth kicking the door and taking this time, put up a green card. If you don't think it's worth it, put up the red card. I want to see my young man participate. Come on, young brother. Participate with me, man. Hit a lick. To hit a lick. This, three weeks ago, I'm in Fulton County. It was uh, in front of Big Judge LaGroo three weeks ago. 16 years old. They robbed someone on the beltway. Right? So somebody is running on the beltway and they put a pistol to him. What do you get from someone on the beltway? A cell phone. A cell phone. And it's made in half charged. It's the only one fully charged cell phone. Right? But it's it's 10 years. And I do this every time I'm gonna keep everybody put your hands up. Like this. Give me 10. Show me 10. Everybody, put 10 up. Come on, bro. Put 10 up. Because I want this to resonate in your mind. That every time a lawyer goes in a superior court and sees one of our 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds getting 10 years for stealing a cell phone because he had a pistol on him. Now hold him up. It's uncomfortable. This is how uncomfortable it is for a secret fan who's in DeKalb County prosecuting cases. She's a prosecutor. She don't want to see you, your son, your daughter. All right, y'all. Ten years, man. But if you do the math, it's a mandatory minimum. So what that means is you don't get parole or probation. You've got to do every single day of it. And it ends up being Excuse a penny an hour for those 87,000 hours you give to them. Y'all understand? Is that a good hustle? I'm stunned, I'm stunned, I'm stunned. I know that was true. I'm stunned, I'm stunned, I'm stunned, I'm stunned. So here's how the weed goes. Everybody I know is legal in Colorado. It's not legal here. Okay? Y'all hear me? News flash Colorado. And Atlanta is not legal here. I'm um, yes. sorry. Somebody say it, yeah. Say, somebody say, it's only legal soon, and I'm making one. But check this out. Here's how this works. You can be honest now, because we're in church. Anybody here know uh, someone that sold drugs at some point? Put your hand up. Be honest. Anybody, keep your hand up for one second. Anybody here who knows someone that sold drugs at some point, did were they unarmed when they sold drugs? Put your hand down. You know, they sold drugs, but they didn't carry no gun. No. It don't work like that. That's part of the game. Weed in one pocket, that in the other. That's what's up. I gotta have my tool. That's a part of um, the occupational. It's an occupational hazard. But you gotta have your gun on you if you sell a weed. You're not gonna hit me, you gotta have it. That's a part of it. And so what happens, and what we've seen happen in, in, from a young kid from DeKalb County that was at West Georgia, the smartest kid I've ever represented on a murder charge. Never been arrested before. But he had to get some weed brought down from Atlanta to sell up in Carroll County. Have y'all been out there? Lately, 
When you come in the courthouse, there's a Confederate monument with Confederate flags, and I gotta go in and try a case. Imagine that. And so we go in, and this young brother is facing murder because the dude who's gonna sell the weed's got a gun, and because I'm buying weed, I gotta carry a gun, and so we got gunplay, somebody gets killed, and now one young man is dead, and uh, two other are facing murder. Yeah, see, so, so what I'm saying is, if you don't buy weed, you'll put yourself in competition. That's all I can say. It's what it's legal. It's not legal now, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Shoplifting. Y'all know this one is a real, real doozy. We've represented some folk over with that are well on their way to having their degree, and they decide they've got to go in the Walmart and just take. I'm like, man, how did you get all of that in? You're around here wearing, you know, tights and a. Where did you hide it? <laughs> you, you got to get caught. That could not work well. But you go and you steal about $50, $60 dollars worth of stuff, and you got to hire a lawyer. Then you've got to get kicked out of school in the middle of the semester. Yep. You, you hire a lawyer. You have to pay the probation fees. Yep. You have to play the diversion program fee so that you can have your record clear. Yep. But then you will never be able to get but, but here's the trick. So even when you get your record restricted, when you decide, now I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to get a license of some sort. I have to report the fact that I was arrested. And what you were arrested for is a crime of moral turpitude. What does that mean? We don't trust you. You can't open up my register at McDonald's because we don't trust you. You a thief. That's the cost of a bad hustle. Right? It's literacy or lock up. Just the facts. Um, how many teachers we got? Just the facts. Walk. You have any students at your school that are struggling with reading? Yes, sir. You have any men coming to your school to help those struggling young men with reading? No, sir. Can we organize that? Is anybody in here willing to help us help a young man? Because if they cannot read, they're going to turn to another alternative. If the education fails them, which in my humble opinion, it is designed to fail. Fact. If we're going to be real about it, you get tired of seeing somebody else's story when you're like, man, we are on, on two pages in the thing, and y'all got us as chattel slavery. Right. Put it in context. You don't even have mathematics if you don't have African people. Talk here, man. You don't have none of this without us. Talk, man. We write on the little tape. That's my mama. Yeah. So, so if you go over to the Fulton County, these are the numbers for Fulton. The inmates between 20 and 25, 90% no high school diploma. Oh, reading, 65% are reading below the seventh grade reading level. So the, the numbers are very much the same in DeKalb County. So if you want to guarantee your sale, drop out of school. If you just like, man, I'm, I want to go to jail, quickly, just drop out of school. You, you, you get there. Just a matter of days. Commish, Commissioner Larry Johnson is, is in the house. So just, Commish. Is this what, we see the same numbers in DeKalb, right? Commissioner Johnson is doing all kind of programs to try to help save young people. That's why I invite you. I'm not going to invite nobody up here just on no chunk move that's not helping us. So what do we have to do? We talk about touches. Any Kobe? Anybody love Kobe? Put your hand up if you love Kobe. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got a bunch. Senator Ford, we got a bunch of Kobe haters, man. <laughs> Senator, we got a bunch of Kobe haters in here. It's cool though. I don't like him personally, but if you can put up 81, you got game. You know, like Jesus Sutherworth, you got game. But check. Here's the piece, adults. The only way, the 
only way that Kobe Bryant scores 81 points is that if he gets enough touches. So let's, let's break this down for a second. What, what does it mean to get enough touches in life? I need a coach that cares about me to touch me. I need a parent. I need a grandparent. I need a cultural teacher. I need a deacon at the church. I need a pastor to get enough quality touches. See, you can't score 81 points if they give you the ball too late in the shot clock. Yeah. If they just give it, if they just say, here, here's three seconds left, and they say, do something with it. You're going to throw something up crazy. Right, right? Right? You got you to have the ball early to score, don't you? This is one of our young stars. You got to have the ball early to score. You got to put it, we got to, we got to have the right touches and they got to be touched early. We can't wait. You can't be tripping on your 17 year old when you ain't mess with him from 0 to 16. Don't trip on him. Trip on us. That's on us. So we got to be telling him to teach him all the way up. This kid just didn't get good. I watched the kid develop. He's been walling, he's been putting in the work. So he's going to be good. That's the same way in life. So parents, we got to rededicate ourselves. Troy, you volunteer all the time. She's volunteering, helping other people's children. That's how we save them. The answer to the consequences of thug life is in this room. It's just us. We got about 15 organizations represented here. And we're going to ask you that when we finish, for you to go down and register your young person to be a part of something. Don't walk out of here with just, you know, man, that was, that was fun. Those days are over. This is not the lecture model. This is really a chance for you to connect. You came here needing something, right? We all came here needing something, needing each other, but needing something specifically. And so that's what we're asking you to do. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Put your money in. All the money. Man, call me. 
I will come and get you and I will not ask you a question. I won't whoop you. I won't slap you. I won't pull out my extension cord. Y'all know about the extension cords. They do that anymore now. I'm not going to ask you a question. All I'm saying is, just call me, man. Because at the end of the day, I just want to wake up the next day and see your face. I can't trip that you ran with a knucklehead. We can unpack it another time, but I'm not going to be mad at you. Y'all know who that is? The, the, the artist? D1. So, so we all, and, and I took this out of the presentation this time, but I want you to balance your hip hop diet. This is get you some D1. Get you some uh, stick man and dead prayers. Balance it out a little bit. You know, I'm, I know we love Atlanta, you know, that, that trap music. We love it, but we got to balance it out. So that's us. Look that one up. The, the title of the song is You Stupid Fool. I, I think it's a good title. But it just talks about, you know, you on Facebook and Twitter threatening people. You know, we there's a sister right now that's been on YouTube, you know, trying to get a bond. Like, you know, when you say this about folk, you know, we're in a different climate. We got to understand that. Like, we're in a different climate. We start to reawaken. And when people see us start to reawaken, they're going to get rough with you. So you have to understand your environment. You can't say and do everything and there'll be no consequences. This is my last section, y'all. Everybody all right? Yeah. How much time I got? Do I have 15 more minutes? Yeah. 10. Somebody said, man, you got four minutes. <laughs> then I'm walking out. And I've known you for a while. I don't care. I hear you. I see my brother, Original Michael, in the back. Put it up, bro. That brother there, I asked him to come tonight because uh, part of one of the situations we're dealing with is addiction. And so that brother is an expert. So when we had our situation with Scrappy, Original worked with him, turned it around. So if you have a young person, because part of it is if you put chemicals in you, it's hard to get information. It's, you know, it's, it's a disconnect. So you got to clear some of that chemical stuff out so that you can rap like, here what we do. Every day you get up, you either organizing for power or you organizing for prison. And for some of us that are older, you're like, man, I ain't organizing for power. You might just be organizing for a different kind of prison, though. To be locked in your own house scared of your young people. That's a prison. So you got to decide which one you're organizing for, for power or for prison. And we got some organizing in here. Put your hand up if you're organizing. For real, look at that, for real organizing. What about the Cab 100? Um, I saw that the Cab 100 come in. They organized the whole academy. There it is, John Hollis. They organized the whole academy for young black boys. Like, we got you got a teenager? In, in DeKalb County, there's no excuse. We got Gary. Where's Gary? Gary Davis. Gary, Gary got Next Level Boys Academy. Organizing. He's taking that for, what's he taking that? Five years old, Gary? Five years old. And when they come down to let us make men, they're the most disciplined, respectful young brothers. That's the testament to the leadership. There's no excuse for you to walk out of here today and not have what you need for real for your young person. I'm gonna come to you in one second, sis. You, you post or share certain information. You wake up at a certain time. You do certain activities. You think certain thoughts. You hang with certain people and you value certain things. You organize. It's just a question of what you're organizing for. You can, if you get up at 1 in the afternoon every day, young person, you organize it for something. Like, you like, your parents are like, man, I need you to get up at 7. 8, you know, when I get up, it was one of those things my mom, she's like, I'm up. I'm like, well, I'm still asleep. No, if I'm up, you up. I had one of them moms. You know, she don't like to see even my 
when she stays over, they're like, you're gonna have to get up in the morning. Yeah. You're gonna have to get up. So who's in your clip? You got something for me? They, you know, they gotta get some music. Uh -huh. Click, click, click. Ain't nobody fresher than my mom, mom. Click, 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 click. was like, I will smash the mic. I just told you my pulpit, young brother. Y'all will come and take that mic out your head. You, you got to watch who you hang with. That's my mom. That's what she said. I believe that even right now. Those of y'all, I know people in this room, y'all are like, Ascending, you're on your way to doing some special stuff. Don't surround yourself around people that are haters, man. Right. People that don't believe you, you know, they're like, oh, you can never do that. Come on, man. I come from a park called Weather Park where cats just, you know, if I listen to what them dudes were saying, I wouldn't be standing here. Don't listen to that. I'm telling you. You don't know what people been through when something my mother get her teeth knocked out. I'm here. Don't, don't, don't make no excuses, but don't let people get around you who are going to be hating on your dreams. You can't afford it because life is already too hard. Put people, that's why, man, that's why I love letters make man. Because when I'm with them brothers, they're not going to let me fall. They're going to, man, stand up straighter, bro. Go harder. They're going to critique me tonight. Like, hey, man, you, you need to tighten up. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta watch who you hang with for real. Even when you get to a certain level. Would you bet your life if you had a 3% chance of winning? Mm -hmm. right. You got a chance. Uh, Would you bet your life on 3% chance? Uh, so let me let me give you let me give you the mathematics on that. I've had thousands of cases, and I've had hundreds of cases with co-defendants. This is where we, I'm going somewhere with this. I've had hundreds of cases with co-defendants. I have had, out of all of those cases, three instances, three, that's where the 3% comes in, where the person stayed, we call it, uh, standing 10 toes down, right? They, they do their time for you. You just, you, you know, we bust it and you like, was your boy involved? You're like, I'm not talking. Three instances. Every other instance is the co-defendant flips. And the prosecutor love it. They just, they just, oh, I'm going to flip him. When I tell him about this 10 years, he going to flip. Well, that's his cousin. He's not going to flip on his cousin. He going to flip. No, that's his brother. He's not going to flip on his brother. No, he going to flip. That is his son. He's not going to flip on his son. He going to flip. A sheik in my life. You flipping, right? There it is. So what I'm saying is, why would you be on something where the person, when y'all get jammed up, is going to flip on you? That's how you got to, you know, I'm just saying, it's simple to me. You know, if I'm going to be with somebody doing anything, I just want to know they're going to have my back. And I know if it's a, any illegality, they're not. So don't even try. We got a quick checklist. Who you hanging with is on your sheet right here. On your sheet right here, we just want you to take a moment when you get to the crib, when you get home, to get your young people and just have them go through this list. Okay? Brother, you with me? I'm pouring out my heart. Tap him on his back. I just need him. You know, I'm an eye contact dude. Check this out for me, okay? All right? Does anyone believe the black community needs to be better organized? Put your green card up if you agree, red card if you disagree. All right. We coming to, we coming to a close. Y'all better get ready. Does anyone believe that there's a need for fundamental change in our communities and in this country? Put your, your monkey, put two cards up, man. <laughs> We can do it. Let me tell you the idea. It's like where like we start like this youth league, right? Like football league, basketball, football, I think basketball, football, softball, for girls and boys. I'm gonna get all the rappers to adopt the team. Like each rapper has his own team. Cool has a team, Trek has a team, I have a team, and we 
would collect the classes, the ones who put the money up, we get to see it when I had, we had like the church come out and sell food. That's real. We had the fathers and the uncles and all the men in the community, they do security. Right. And I think they respect that for the kids and everything. Yeah. Then we had the FOI come out. Get their respect back. So that's Pac. That's Pac talking to um, Monster Cody. So they talking about this is, you know, man, if we could do this, we get everybody back. But then he's got some power. And then when we do that, we register the voters. And then we can register them for a Democrat, Republican, or Independent. Yeah. Once we register the voters, we have power. Then we start going up to the mayors of these cities and telling them, look, we got this many voters in this city. We want you to do this. We want a, a community center. We start hitting the Nike for the free club. Hey, man, I'm just saying, if you can't hear from me, Pop was giving us something. He's giving us something. We got to just consider following him. Is anyone willing to be a part of change? Put up a green card, man. Yeah! As hard as you guys work with me, put up a green card if you're willing to be a part of change. Yeah! All right, now I'm about to really press y'all. Everybody ready to get pressed? Because in part of being in churches, you got to get out your comfort zone, right? Uh -huh. Right? They got the, the pastor got to hit you beside. I'm not, I'm not the pastor. I'm just borrowing the mic. I'm about to, you know, we got to press you a little bit. So y'all ready to get pressed? Everybody all right? Yeah. All right, we're going to press a little bit. So we organize for pop. Everybody ready? Put your green card up and be ready to organize for pop. Y'all thought I was just going to come here and dog out the young, the young cats to sag their pants. Nah, I'm on y'all. Are you trying to organize for pop? Right. Yeah! You and that one, Marley? Who was there? Yeah. Alright, if you were there, put your, put, your, put your green card up. You're okay, Marley. I know y'all was there, Xavier. Get ready to get arrested. For real, they were just like, you know, come running past. Hey, will you represent me if I get arrested? I'm like, oh uh, yeah, we'll do it. You know, because you're going to bang against the system, we we'll bang with you. Do you all agree our community is in need of change? Yeah! Alright. Does anyone want to see an end to police killing unarmed black men? Yeah! In the, in the, in the house tonight, y'all, we got um, the father of Troy Robinson. Troy Robinson was killed on August the 6th when an officer, a cab county officer, tased him in his back as he was climbing over a wall and he broke his neck. Can y'all just acknowledge Troy's dad? Like he lost his son. His fiance, their children, he lost the father. So we want to see an end to this for real, right? A person committed to changing the current system is called a revolutionary. Ooh. I told y'all it was coming. Look, everybody else got quiet, you know. They was like, oh, I can't say that word. Uh, what was it, uh, symbol? Y'all watch Lion King, they were like, they couldn't say that word. Ooh. Revolutionary. Y'all like, oh my God. Man, if we don't think the system. I mean, we've just all been in here all night, and we just like, yo, the system needs to change. The only people that change the system is a revolutionary. So don't run from that word. It's okay. The system needs to change. Our kids are being miseducated. We got kids getting gunned down in the street. We have a system that has our children believing that the only way they can get it is putting a gun in somebody's back, and y'all don't think the system needs to change? All of us. All of us should be like, I want to be a revolutionary because I want to change the system. I got to change. Whether I'm a teacher, a professor, a lawyer, an insurance broker, we got to find a way to do it. Who is that? Praying after I am a revolutionary with the last words that are on come on man that's where we at that's the time of day it is we just we don't some of us are still catching up so when you saw the young people in Ferguson and you saw the young people in Baltimore and you saw the young people here in Atlanta 
you are tripping on them like, man, they're tripping. They're not tripping. We're tripping. Because we're not standing with them. We the ones tripping. And so I know that you thought that I was just going to talk about just, man, we got to just do this, this, you know, stop getting in trouble. But young people, what I'm telling you is we need you for the work. And we can't use you if you locked up. We need you for the movement. We need you in the struggle. There were kids in Birmingham that were grade school age that changed America. There were students at Morehouse and FAMU and North Carolina A&T that changed America. So don't trip on them being, no, I'm 15, I can't do nothing. I'm 45, I can't do nothing. Somebody better check on Fannie Lou Hamer. Check her age. Right now. That's the, that's the, so if you're not going to be a thug, we said be revolutionary. This, this presentation has evolved to that. I'm, I'm done with just saying, man, stay in school and get good grades. That ain't enough. That is not enough. We need you to help change. You can't have no more Troy Robinsons. And the only way we shut it down is that we turn that thug energy, because it's an energy, into something that changes the world. We've done it before, we can do it again. All we're asking is that you get involved. And the way you start is when you go downstairs and you sign your young person up so that your young person becomes more clear-minded with what they're doing. And then you keep bringing them out, making sure they're listening to the right stuff. That's how we do it. We got the organizations listed right here on the back. We just need you to sign up. I know I, I don't get paid from none of these organizations. It's just I know that you need good stuff in you to order in order to produce good stuff in the world. I'm not a thug. I'm a revolutionary. Mm. I couldn't always say that. I'm saying that today. And I hope and I dare you to say that in your spirit every day you get up. I'm not a thug. I'm a revolutionary. I'm going to make change in this world. That's what we need. I appreciate everybody who's going to hear from Brother Malcolm. I just want to acknowledge Brother Bozeman as he's coming up and acknowledge she's getting ready to let us hear and I do not think free of these people by any means necessary. That is our model. We want free by any means necessary. We want justice by any means necessary. We want equality by any means necessary any means necessary. I appreciate y'all. I hope that you got something out of this and we look forward to seeing you the next go around. And I'll just say this last thing. Can you all acknowledge that what Brother Bozeman does is extraordinary? He would, he would actually get a mic to a kid from the south side of Chicago talking revolutionary talk. But that's the only way we're going to win working together. I love this brother. I look forward to talking to each of you all, and I look forward to seeing you in the struggle in the street. Free the land. Thank you. Let's give Attorney Ronald Davis another big round of applause. Y'all can do better than that. How many of you have heard something tonight that you did not know or had not heard before you came here tonight? Raise your green card. When he starts saying green card, I was looking for some of my Mexican brothers. <laughs> I didn't see the card piece. Don't go in the place, please sit down before.